Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Now in the last few videos, there's been a whole pile of work done on the house and I began the prep work for all the trees that I'm gonna be planting. So that is exactly where we're gonna pick things up in this video. Now, if you watch the most recent video where I moved and spread about 250 yards of dirt in the front of my lot, well, that was really just the beginning of the bobcat work that I had to do. Once the front of the lot was brought up enough, I also had to bring in and spread topsoil so that my trees have some good soil to grow in, but I also plan on seeding some grass up front as well. Now as I continue to carefully and expertly put this topsoil and manure mix where I want it, the area that I'm working in right now on this section of tree line is what I'm calling the eco buffer. Going forward, you're going to hear me refer to it as that a lot. And while it might sound like a nonsense word, it's short for ecological buffer. And basically what it is, is a thick and dense planting of trees and shrubs that provides many, many benefits over a traditional tree line or shelter belt. I'll get into more of the detail behind it and what my specific plan is on this side of the art a little bit later in the video. After getting topsoil spread in the eco buffer yesterday, I moved to the front tree line now where the plan is to plant two alternating rows of spruce spruce pine pine, or beer beer truck truck as I like to call it, you know from the country song. But anyways, I was out here moving dirt early this morning when one of the workers from the house came running across the yard to tell me that there was a fire in the house. Yeah, as you can imagine, my heart absolutely sank and I immediately ran into the house to assess the situation and do whatever I could to help get it put out. Now, luckily for me, the fire was actually contained inside of the fireplace where the packaging materials had somehow caught on fire. No one had a clue how that happened because the remote was still in the packaging and the batteries weren't even in it, but it was burning pretty good, so I decided we better be safe than sorry, and I called 911, who arrived on scene very quick, along with some RCMP, and they were able to quickly and safely get it put out. But of course, the fireplace was a total write-off and had to be replaced. A little later that morning and I continued my work over on the other side of the yard where I used the bobcat and the auger to drill a bunch of holes for some beautiful spruce trees. Then got all those planted along with a nice thick row of three different species of lilac. So at this point now I've got topsoil spread along the perimeter of the yard for all the different tree lines and the eco buffer and you'll also notice that I've got the entire outside portion of the fence done. I was working on that in the recent day in the life video where I ended up using 54 inch tall stucco wire for the fence. Now I'm also going to be fencing the inside of the tree line as well once everything is planted. That way the rabbits won't be able to get in and the deer, well obviously they can still jump over the fence but I'm hoping it's just enough of a deterrent that they'll go and eat my neighbors plants and trees instead. Okay, so here I am at a critical point in my work. I've got over 800 trees coming in the mail in just a few days, and I have to go out of town to pick up some bigger ones as well. And to this point, I don't have any of my irrigation set up. So my next task is simple. Well, at least on paper, I need to get a line from the well plumbed through the wall and then around the entire perimeter of my yard. Sounds easy, doesn't it? Well, I can assure you it was not. Now, I'm not a plumber by trade, but I have dabbled in it enough to know my way around fittings and whatnot, but the problem was I needed to upsize from the one inch feed from the well line into an inch and a half fitting so that I could use the inch and a half poly pipe that I had bought, and at the same time I had to go from brass fittings into plastic. Anyways, let me tell you that the right fittings weren't easy to come by as even the local plumbing distributor didn't have much of what I needed. Slowly but surely though, I was able to piece together a solution to get the water down to an appropriate level where I could drill through the shop wall. Now because I'm smart and I like to think ahead, I went ahead and put a valve on here with a hose bib so that I can easily hook up my air compressor in the fall when it comes time to blow up the irrigation lines. And this way I can stay warm inside the building and can hopefully limit the amount of time I have to be outside doing that. 
At this point, I'm really close. This is the fitting here that will allow me to go from brass into the poly pipe. So after measuring a piece out, I've got the last little section ready to attach, and then I should be at a point where I can line the whole thing up and find where I need to drill through the wall. Now right around this time I got a notification saying that my 800 trees had been delivered so I quickly ran home to pick those up as I didn't want them sitting outside in the sun and I don't know about you guys but I had no idea what to expect getting trees and shrubs in the mail. It looks like most of these are really short little sticks and they're packaged in bundles of 3 to 5 depending on the variety. Now as for what I ordered, there's blue spruce, scots pine, oaks, silver maples, poplars, birch, ash, lilacs, ninebarks, and many more. Okay, well after the trees had a little sleep over in the studio, I was back the next day to get to work on planting as many as I could possibly get in the ground. Though before I get to that, it's probably a good idea to explain why I have over 800 trees and shrubs. So like I mentioned earlier, I'm doing what's called an eco buffer on the one side of my yard. And an eco buffer is defined as a new shelter belt design that incorporates a variety of native trees and shrubs in a narrow, dense configuration that captures the site quickly, reducing the need for long-term weed control. But besides that benefit, it's also great for the soil, great for pollinators, offers fantastic biodiversity, which means that if any one species of trees gets a disease, then it's not going to wipe out the entire tree line like it would with a more traditional shelter belt. Plus, it's going to be really thick and offer great privacy in just a couple of years. Now, as far as what you're supposed to plant in an eco buffer, it should of course be plants native to the region, a variety of species, fast and slow growing plants, and a range of different heights. And overall, it ends up being planted about five to six times as dense as a traditional tree line. In row spacing is about three feet apart and between row spacing is about five feet apart. So it's very thick. As for the design, I went with a five row design and this is what the overall layout should look like. Obviously I knew keeping all that straight was going to be a challenge. So I made sure to measure and mark everything out with flags that represent the different kinds of trees and shrubs. And also managed to sneak away last night to go and pick up the 80 or so larger blue spruce trees that I'll be planting in the eagle buffer and in the other sections of tree line as well. Okay, so now I've got nearly 900 trees and shrubs that I need to get in the ground, so I'm going to have a very, very busy day. Now, of course, I'm not crazy enough to try to do this all myself. I did recruit a little bit of extra manpower and had my parents come out for the day, so that was a big help. Now every time I plant a tree or shrub, or any sort of perennial for that matter, I always put some water and bone meal in the hole to help promote root development, and it's always served me well. I think I went through something like 10 pails of bone meal today as we work to get as many trees into the ground as possible. So while the vast majority of what I'm planting here are tiny little sticks that came in the mail, I've actually been busy over the past several weeks buying up some bigger trees and shrubs as well, with a lot of them coming from Costco, but I was at Home Depot the other day and found an absolute steal of a deal on some lilacs. Each one was only 30 bucks. I'm not sure if they priced them wrong, but it was definitely a start the car moment. So I was also busy today using Bobby to move all the larger trees and shrubs out to where they were being planted, and then I got all the holes dug for them as well. Okay, well with a good chunk of the trees and shrubs in the ground now, it's time to turn my attention to getting them watered, which at this point is pretty critical because I do not want to be stringing together garden hoses to try to water them all for very long. So here's my plan. I'm going to use this inch and a half poly pipe as the main line 
and it's going to run off that well line I was working on earlier and basically run around the entire perimeter of the yard. Then from there, I'm gonna have 10 strategically placed valve boxes around the yard for all the tree lines, grass, garden areas, and flower beds. All in all, I should be able to have up to 50 zones for the entire property, which should be more than enough to do what I'm intending to do. Now, each of these spools of inch and a half line is 500 feet long and is fairly awkward to deal with, so I attached a big pipe to Johnny's bucket, which made it a bit easier to unwind the line and get it laid out in roughly the location that it'll be buried. Now just to expand on what I was saying earlier, the inch and a half line will feed each of the valve boxes, but I'm planning to use three quarter inch valves, so that means I need to make reducing tees to go from the inch and a half down to three quarter inch, and then from each of the valves, it'll just be regular three quarter inch line. Here's a look at some of the beautiful trees and shrubs planted yesterday, including my nursery area for all the leftover spruce and pine trees. Okay, well it's a new day and today's task is to trench around the entire yard so I can drop the main irrigation line in there by the end of the day. And to do that, I've rented this ditch witch machine, which I think only cost a couple of hundred bucks to do so. And while it's a slow moving unit, it's going to make quick work of this job today. So what I'm trying to do is put the trench around 10 to 12 inches deep and keep it roughly the same distance away from the inside fence line all the way around. But one annoying thing about the machine is that it's really good at finding rocks. I can't tell you how many times it found one and scooped it right up until it jammed the track, but I'm not going to complain because I do fully intend on using those rocks down the road. Now I don't remember exactly how long this took me today, but I want to say it was somewhere in the neighborhood of six to seven hours, as I had somewhere between 1,500 to 2,000 feet of trenching to do, as not only did I trench for the main line, but I also had to trench each of the lines that would tee off of it and feed all the valve boxes, and then I also trenched the line to bring power from the shop to each corner of the lane for future lights. And of course, as you can imagine, this thing chews through gas like crazy, so it's a good thing I had a cherry can on hand. Okay guys, well that is where I'm gonna leave it for this video and I truly hope that you enjoyed this one. If you did, please make sure you smash the thumbs up button and go ahead and leave a comment down below and let me know what your favorite part of this video was. Um, also, make sure you're subscribed to the channel because there is so much more coming your way very soon. So until then, I'll catch you guys in the next one.